Hey guys and welcome back. So in today's PyQt5 tutorial, what we're going to be doing is learning how to use this Qt designer, how to first of all open up this program, run it, install it, and secondly, how to actually transform whatever we create in here into code that we can actually use, play with, and run. So the first step is actually bringing up this designer window and making sure it's installed on our computer. So to do this, we're going to go to our command prompt and we're going to make sure that we've installed uh, PyQt5 tools. Now I did this in the previous video, but if any of you weren't following along, what you need to do to do this is just pip install PyQt5 hyphen tools. You're going to do this in whatever version of Python you're working with. Uh, and now what we're actually going to do is look for what's known as the site packages folder inside of our main Python folder. So whenever you install Python on your computer, um, you're going to have a directory that has Python and all of the pip packages that you've installed. And that's what allows you to import them uh, and use them and install them actually using pip. So we need to find this folder. Now this can be kind of difficult and it depends. Um, it's going to be different depending on what machine you're working with. The first place I usually check if you don't know where your Python is installed is in this program files x86. Scroll through, look for P, look for Python. If you see it there, you see Python 3.6, whatever it is, click into there, click into the lib folder, and then click into the site packages folder. Now, if for some reason you can't find it there, what you can always do is just do a Python search through your entire C drive. So just make sure you're in that root directory. So the C drive, search for Python, wait for the search results to finish, and then it should show you where that folder is. Now for me, I actually know where my Python folder is, um, and I'm using a version of Python called Anaconda. So for me, mine is in users, my username, which is Tim Ott, and then Anaconda3. So some of the, this might apply to some of you guys if you're using Anaconda. And then you can see here that there's this lib folder and this lib folder is what you guys are aiming to find. So you could also search lib, but there's a bunch of different lib folders for different applications. So that's why I don't usually recommend that. And then from lib, we're going to be looking for site packages. Now, again, you can also search for the site packages folder up here if you're not having any luck finding the Python folder. And once you get into that site packages folder, now you're going to scroll through and you're going to see these are all of the different packages um, that you've actually installed into pip. Uh, some of them are dependencies of others. So you're going to scroll down and we're going to look for PyQt5 tools. I'm going to keep going here. I have a lot of packages um, if you can't tell and look for PyQt5 wherever that is and then tools. So PyQt5 underscore tools. I guess you could also search for that folder as well. It'll just take a long time to find it. Once we're inside of here, what we're going to do is look for this designer application. It shows the little QT icon um, and it shows up right here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, because I don't want to have to go through this process every time I want to open up this designer, is just create a shortcut. So to do that, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to um, create shortcut like that. Now it's going to pop up a shortcut for me like that. And I'm just going to drag it to my desktop uh, or somewhere where I'm not going to lose it. Now I've already, I've already got one there, but I'll just override that. And now I have a shortcut to QT designer and we're ready to start using it. Um, quick side note here. If you are not finding this in Anaconda, it might be because you're using a virtual environment. So go inside this ENVs folder, um, look through your virtual environment, and then you'll be able to uh, open it and run it. Okay. So next we are actually going to run this now and start playing with QT designer. So we're going to open this up here uh, and the first thing we need to do is select what we want to create. Now, typically what we're going to be doing is selecting a main window or a widget. Now, a main window is what it says is that main window, similar to what we created in the last video, a widget will be something that we can place inside of the main window. So sometimes if you already have a main window and you want to create a widget, then maybe you'll place somewhere inside of it, then you would choose widget. But in our case, since we're just start starting out here, we don't already have anything, we're going to use main window. Now for screen size, you can select whatever you'd like. I'm just going to do default size and then go ahead and hit create. And now what I can do is start by resizing this window and I can start dragging and dropping things into here like I showed you in that very first tutorial. So let's say I want to add a push button somewhere. I can go ahead and do that and just throw my push button right there. Uh, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, I can do whatever I like with it. I can add some maybe check buttons, um, 
again, resize, the, resize those, really, it, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm not gonna show too much of this right now because we are gonna work with this more in the future and create actual applications and use layouts, which will actually be in the next video. But what I'm gonna do for now is just create a button and a label and I'm going to show you how we can actually turn this button and this label um, that we've created here into code that we can actually use. So for this label, all I've done to modify this is just double click. And I'm just going to say, hello, my name is Tim. Now for this push button, same thing. I want to modify it. I double click and now I can change this button to say something like press me. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do whenever we create some kind of objects in here is we want to change the object name. And the object name is going to be how we actually reference these objects from the code. So for example, this button here, right now it defaults to the value of push button, uh, but that's not very useful to us. So what I want to do is change this to be button one, something like that. Okay. Now the label, same thing. The name is label. Now for us, maybe that's okay. We want to keep that because we only have one label. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to make it label one in case we add any other ones. Now you guys can see there's a ton of different options on this right bar here. And this is what's known as the property editor um, that you can mess with. You can change um, and you can change the background to do whatever you want. You know, all that kind of stuff. I'll let you guys play around with that. You can change the font size here, um, how big everything is very useful. And up here is what's known as the object inspector. So on this right hand side of my screen. Now this is useful uh, because you can actually see uh, what all of the different items you have are and where they sit. So for example, the menu bar, which is up here and I can modify it by double clicking and maybe add file or something like that. And you see when I do that, it actually asks me if I want to type something else in this menu bar as well, which I'm not going to do right now. And now if we look here, you can see menu bar, menu file, um, Q menu, and it kind of goes through everything that we have. So let you guys play around with this um, and add some different objects in, but we will be talking about these throughout the future tutorials. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and save this um, and it saves these files as a dot UI file. Now a UI file is going to be what we're going to use to actually transform this into code. So what I'm going to do is just save this into my tutorial folder, uh, which I believe is somewhere here. Maybe I'm in the wrong one. Um, one second guys I think I passed by there it is so I'm gonna save this as test um, and just go ahead and hit save and make sure you know where you save this file uh, because we need to use this to actually turn this into code now quick side note here if you actually want to view what this looks like in, um, in like a real window I believe what you can do is go to form and then go to preview and what this will do is pop this up so you can actually see how it looks without kind of that little grid behind it um, Obviously no logic is going to work because it's just a, uh, what do you call it? A GUI, but you get the idea there. Now to turn this into code, I'm going to show you how we can use a command line uh, interface thing to do this. So I'm going to navigate back into that folder where I save this. So I got to find that. So Python, YouTube, uh, PyQt tutorial, and this is the folder, the file I just created. So test.ui. Now I'm just going to open the command prompt up here. And I'm going to type a command that is going to turn this UI file into a Python file for me. So it's going to take all the code, generate it for me, and then allow me to actually see it and edit it. So to do this, what we're going to use is pi uic5. So start by making sure that this command works by just hitting enter. And if you get some kind of output, whether it's an error like this, that says one input UI file must be set specified, um, then it's working properly. So we're going to do pi uic5 hyphen x, which stands for executable. And then we're going to type the name of our UI file. So what we want to transform into code. So in this case, test.ui. And remember that this command prompt window that I just opened is actually inside of this directory. So make sure that you're inside the correct directory with your command prompt. You can simply open it by just typing CMD in the top bar of your Windows Explorer and it'll automatically open it in that directory. And you can test by just having a look here. Okay, so we're gonna do pi uic uh, hyphen five test.ui hyphen o, which stands for output file, and then the name of the Python file you wanna save it to. So in this case, maybe we'll just do test.py. So you're gonna go, go ahead and hit enter. If you don't get any output, that actually means that this worked properly. And to verify, we can look and see that we now have this test.py file in our main directory. So let's go ahead and actually open this up. So I'm just gonna open this up in um, subline text like that. 
And now you can see that we actually get um, the code that generated this for us. And if I go ahead and run this, you can see that it pops up that same window that we created before. So with this code now, we can do everything that we've done in this other code file, which was the last one we were working with. Um, we can mess with things, we can link things to the button, uh, and all of that. So uh, with that being said, that is how you kind of use the QT designer, how you get the code to actually pop up uh, and run. Obviously, this is a little bit messy and maybe you want to modify it and change it a bit. Uh, but you can see that, you know, button one is the name of that button that we created. It has the name button one. Um, you can see label one, same thing, set object name, label one. And then we have that main window, the menu bar that we created and a status bar as well, uh, which we don't really see, but is actually there. So if we want to create um, like a button link, create a method, you can link that to the button up here like you've done before and all is good. So with that being said, that has been it for this video. I hope you guys have an idea how to use QT Designer and got it up and running. All right. If you have any questions, as always, let me know down below or join my Discord server. With that being said, I will see you guys in another video.